Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brian, and welcome back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity. In this episode, we're going to be diving in. You're going to learn exactly how to create a script, how to add it to a game object, and ultimately how you can print something to the console. If you haven't done any programming before, usually the first thing you do is just write something out to the screen. This is called a Hello World application, and we're going to create our own version of Hello World in Unity itself. Okay, so now you can see that I have Unity open. If you don't understand the interface and all this stuff is somewhat overwhelming to you, I highly suggest you read our Getting Started with Unity tutorial, which will walk you through the process of working with Unity itself. It covers all these various parts of the interface and teaches you how to use them. This series, we're gonna be focusing entirely on C Sharp. So we're not gonna be covering anything such as lights or anything like that. Now, if you have Unity open and it doesn't look like this, then chances are you're using a different layout. You can see up here in the upper right hand corner, there's a button here that says layout. If you press that, you'll see you have all these different layouts you can choose from. For instance, you could, you could have it as default, in which case this would say default like it does now. I prefer to use two by three, so just by clicking that, if you select two by three, then your screen should match my own. The first thing we're going to do is create a cube. And this cube is going to be the target of our scripts. Basically, we're just putting it inside the scene so that we can interact with it. The way I create a cube is in my hierarchy tab, I can click create, and then under 3D object, I'll select cube. And here you can see we have a cube put into the scene view. Now in the inspector view, you can see we have all these components right here. A script is a component. And through the use of C Sharp, we can add our own fields that we can allow the user to customize that script, just like you would customize a component here. To create a script, you simply go down to add component and you can just click that. And you can see we have all these categories. We're gonna click new script. Now here's the name right here, new behavior script. In this case, we're just gonna call it Hello World. We're gonna start with a capital H and with hello and a capital W to spell world. Now you can see we have a language. We have a choice between C Sharp and JavaScript. JavaScript, which is actually Unity's implementation of JavaScript. It's not the same JavaScript you use on the web. There's also a Boo programming language, but it's not implemented here. That was a feature that was removed with Unity 5. Although from the appearance of it being removed from the editor, it's probably going to be ultimately removed from Unity sometime in the future. Being that this is a C-sharp course, we're gonna choose C-sharp and then simply click Create and Add. So now here we can see we have our Hello World script. It's attached here and you'll notice that it has Hello World with a space between it. Although here you can see our script name, Hello World, there is no space between Hello and World. Unity is smart enough to realize that they are two different words and puts a space between them. And here you can see in assets, we have our hello world right here as well. Before we dive into scripting, let's do a little project organization first. First, we're gonna create, click create, and we're gonna create a folder, and we'll just call this scripts. This is where we'll place everything in there. So simply drag, click this hello world script and drag it into scripts like so. We also wanna save this. And the way we do this is we create a new scene. A scene in Unity speak is just a level. So we're gonna click File, and we're gonna cl click Save Scene. And for a scene name, we'll just put Main. Now, if I had multiple scenes, I would create a Scenes folder, but we're only gonna be working with one in this screencast. Okay, now it's time to work on the script itself. So I'm gonna click Scripts, and then I'm gonna double click Hello World. Here you can see Visual Studio opens up with our file now. Now, if this is the first time you're working with C-sharp or the first time you're looking at any type of programming language, you're gonna be somewhat overwhelmed. There's a lot of stuff here that doesn't quite make sense. Here's the thing, although it doesn't make sense now, it will make sense later. Try to resist that urge of trying to understand every little bit of code in this file. You'll understand it later as you progress in the series. For now, trying to understand what a class is, what a mono behavior is, what these statements using mean, that would be simply too much and overwhelm you. For now, just disregard it. And remember, we'll get to that in just a bit. 
Here you can see we have something called start and we have something called update. These are referencing events that take place in our scripts. Scripts respond to certain lifecycle events. For instance, when the script is initially started, this start event happens. When we want the script to do something, well, we can put our code in the update event, and this update occurs on each frame. In our case, we want code to run in an on disable event. The reason for this, once we disable an object, we'll see the result of our code. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select update and start and just simply delete it. Now, if you're working on a Mac, chances are you're using mono develop. Mono develop is very different from Visual Studio, but the things we do in this screencast are not editor specific. So you don't have to worry about it. Everything I'm doing here, you will be able to follow along on mono develop as well. So here you see we have a class, hello world. Again, don't worry about what a class is. Don't worry about what the braces mean or anything else. We want to create our on disable event. So the first thing you're going to type is void. Next, you're going to type on disable. Notice that the first letter O is capitalized and the D in disable is capitalized. Capitalization in programming languages is incredibly important. This right here is different from this. So keep in mind, you have to pay attention to capitalization or you'll run into issues. The same goes with this void statement. This void right here is different from a void. In fact, you can see that the blue is gone. This void here indicates that this is a keyword, meaning C sharp knows what this means, but it doesn't know what this means because it has a capital V. Again, we'll be covering what void means in a later part in this series. At the end of on disable, you're gonna put in open parentheses and a closing parentheses. You can see that Visual Studio does this for me. Generally speaking in C sharp, when you have things like a parentheses, in open parentheses, you're, you need to put a closing parentheses. The same goes for things like braces or even things like quotation marks. Okay, now that you've closed your parentheses, you'll just put an open brace. And again, you can see Visual Studio provides me automatically a closing brace. And I'm just gonna click enter and that puts it on a new line. All right, the things that we're going to do is going to go between these two braces. To print out our message, I simply press capital D and then I type E-B-U-G, so debug with a capital D. Then I type period and then log with a capital L. So debug, period, log. Now I'm gonna provide an open parentheses and you can see Visual Studio provides me a closed parentheses. And then I'm gonna provide an open quotation mark like so. In this case, I'm gonna write hello world. Remember to put your closing quotation mark, and there you can see you're done. You have your first statement. This simply prints out hello world when the cube is disabled. Now you'll notice that there's a red squiggle here. This indicates an error. You see, as you write code into the editor, the editor itself will analyze that code to make sure that there are no errors. In this case, it detected an error, which is why there's a little red squiggle here. Well, what is this error? It's a simple one. Basically, I haven't concluded my statement. In English, we conclude our sentences with a period. Well, in C Sharp, we conclude our statements with a semicolon. To fix this error, I simply just add a semicolon, and you can see the squiggle goes away. Now, you'll notice that this doesn't have a semicolon after it, nor does this. Again, we'll be covering these later in this series. Now, if I had misspelled logs, for instance, if I typed LG, you'll see that there's now a little squiggle underneath there. Of course, this means I made an error. C Sharp doesn't know what that means, and it's indicating that by the squiggle. In this case, I can just simply correct it, and now it reads log. So now we have debug, period, log, open parentheses, quotation mark, hello world, close quotation mark, close parentheses, and a semicolon. Now I'm gonna save this and return back to Unity. Okay, now I'm gonna select my cube in my scene view. And here you can see we have our hello world script. And now let's run our game. As you can see, nothing is happening. 
The reason for that is we need to disable the cube. The cube is currently active right now. To disable the cube, we simply go to this check mark here, and then you uncheck it, and it's disabled. And you can tell it's disabled because it disappears from view, and in here, this has got a lighter text. Now, where exactly did that message print out? Well, you can look down here in your status. You see, hello world. Another way you can see it is if you go to window and open up console, and you can see in your console, the message is printed there. And for future, you can always drag your console down here, and now you can always see it underneath your scene view. Okay, well, that's it for this screencast, but as always, we like to end off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to write out another message to the console. But instead of doing this within on disable, I want you to do it within on enable instead. What this means is that if you run your game with the cube enabled, meaning if you run it with this check mark, this checkbox checked, then your message will immediately print out here. Because once the game starts, the cube is instance, and then that on enabled event will fire. And then once you uncheck the cube, then your on disable event will fire. And then once you check it again to enable it, that on event, that on enable event will fire again. So play around with it so that you can get a sense of the difference between on enabled and on disable and do everything within the C sharp hello world script. Well, I hope you enjoyed the screencast. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.